The fourth episode of Marvel's What If Season 2 is here, pondering the question, what if Iron Man crashed into the Grandmaster? Essentially, this episode presents a twist on the narrative of Thor Ragnarok, replacing Thor and Hulk with Tony Stark and Gamora, and substituting gladiator fights with high-speed races. Let's kick off our breakdown with a brief recap of the episode. In the fourth episode of What If, Tony Stark finds himself stranded on Sakaar after a daring attempt to annihilate the Chitauri fleet during the Battle of New York. Initially relieved to discover Earth's safety, Iron Man's plans to leave the planet are thwarted when the Grandmaster, impressed by Tony's past exploits, insists he stay for a birthday celebration. The festivities take an unexpected turn with an intergalactic NASCAR race, revealing the perilous nature of the event. Tony, disturbed by the lack of support for the races, is drawn into action when a colossal monster threatens his new friend, Korg. A mysterious savior, later revealed as Gamora, unexpectedly destroys the monster, setting the stage for a brewing conflict. As the tension between Tony, Gamora, and the Grandmaster escalates, they find themselves trapped in a peculiar situation. Tony, with the help of Korg, breaks free, uncovering Gamora's connection to Thanos and her vengeful motives. Determined to challenge the perception of humanity, Tony sets out to dethrone the Grandmaster, joined by the unlikely duo of Korg and Valkyrie. Meanwhile, Gamora seizes control of the situation, taking Grandmaster and Topaz hostage. Tony's plan to challenge Grandmaster through a death race unfolds, leading to a showdown where Gamora's unexpected actions alter the course of events. Valkyrie emerges as the new ruler of Sakaar, inviting Tony to stay, but he declines, opting to return to Earth. In a surprising turn, Gamora allies with Tony to face Thanos, executing a clever plan that results in Thanos' demise, leaving viewers on the edge of their seats. The unveiling of Valkyrie's multiversal destiny. In a surprising turn of events, following Iron Man's triumph over the Grandmaster in their death race, Valkyrie ascends to the role of King on Sakaar. This revelation suggests that Valkyrie's multiversal destiny is intricately tied to royalty, echoing the concept of canon events as seen in Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. This implication opens the door to the intriguing possibility that despite the destruction of the sacred timeline, every character in the multiverse may still be bound by a predetermined fate. This notion aligns with the Grandmaster's confirmation of Tony Stark's foreseen defeat of Thanos, even within this divergent universe. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing our channel. Moving on to a twist in Gamora's allegiance and Thanos' downfall. After successfully persuading Gamora to join forces in toppling the Grandmaster, Iron Man reciprocates her loyalty by aiding in her mission to eliminate Thanos. The returning Mad Titan, found seated on the familiar throne from Guardians of the Galaxy, offers no resistance as his daughter betrays him. This unexpected turn of events raises questions about an unseen occurrence on the main timeline preceding the events of Guardians of the Galaxy, leading to Gamora's change of heart and betrayal of her father. While the mystery remains unanswered, her arrival on Sakaar must have occurred before 2014. How What If undermines Iron Man's death yet again? Delving into the multiversal complexities, it becomes apparent that Gamora's act of killing her father challenges the significance of Iron Man's sacrifice in Endgame once again. In the pivotal moment of Endgame, Doctor Strange underscores the singular path to victory among millions of possible futures, intimately tied to Tony Stark's self-sacrifice. However, the events in both episodes 1 and 4 of What If Season 2 depict Thanos being easily dispatched by two of his former allies. Ronin the Accuser eliminates him off-screen in the first episode, while Gamora takes his life in the fourth episode, setting the stage for her involvement in the Guardians of the Multiverse's clash with Ultron from the conclusion of What If Season 1. As Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness later contradicts the notion that Iron Man's death was a prerequisite for Thanos' defeat, 
What if further challenges the uniqueness of Stark's ultimate sacrifice by proposing alternative timelines where Thanos could have been vanquished without it? The Grand Master and his brother the Collector are actually immortal? In a surprising twist during the credits of this episode, the mid-credits scene unveils the return of the Grand Master. Despite being melted by his own melt stick, Jeff Goldblum's charismatic antagonist makes a humorous comeback. Jovially, he instructs his sidekick and bodyguard Topaz to fetch a sponge to clean him up. This comedic tag suggests that the elders of the universe, including the Grandmaster and his brother, the Collector, portrayed by Benicio del Toro in the MCU, are indeed immortal. They seem impervious to any challenges they must endure to ensure their survival. This revelation challenges assumptions about the Collector's fate in Avengers Infinity War. Despite initial beliefs that he perished at the hands of Thanos, it now appears unlikely that he actually met his end. While the quality of life for characters like the Grandmaster may not be optimal, the revelation suggests that these characters are genuinely indestructible within the MCU, defying conventional notions of mortality. And that's all for today. Click here to watch our breakdown of What If Episode 3. Thanks for watching.